What is it particularly about VR, particularly from your point of view and as a, um, as a career journalist? What, what, excite, what excited you and what continues to excite you? So, you know, when I made documentary films as a correspondent for Newsweek, as um, the many, many stories that I've told in journalism, I have often tried to put people on scene and really make them understand what's transpiring. Um, and, um, you know, as you can tell from the very first piece I made, which was about hunger, um, and used audio from a real day at a food bank in Los Angeles where um, a man with diabetes was waiting in a long line and he didn't get food in time, um, and his blood sugar dropped too low and he collapsed into a diabetic coma. And I just couldn't stand that these people were going hungry and they were invisible to the world. So in journalism, you're always trying to get people to understand what Martha Gellhorn, a World War II reporter, said, the view from the ground. And I felt like VR had the possibility to show people, and, and you know, we talk about empathy, um, certainly connection um, in a way so that- So not a distraction, it's the thing in itself. It gets people more engaged in the subject. Absolutely. I, I think when my son was 11, he said, well, if you feel like it could happen to you, you even care more. And being there makes you feel like it could happen to you. And I, and I, and I think that's what's one of VR's really beautiful um, possibilities, is how it can tell important and compelling stories. And, and that's what drove me to, to keep pushing in the medium. Working with Frontline right now, we've been doing something, this is a pretty sophisticated audience, but called photogrammetry. And we went into a, uh, a cell, a solitary confinement cell in a main state prison, and we did photographs, so every inch of it is photoreal. And now you're walking in a little cell. And then in collaboration with 8i, we brought in a guy who spent five years in that cell, 20 years in prison, and we did you know, hologram videogrammetry of him talking about biting chunks of his flesh out, being trapped in oh this room. God. Yes, yeah. So and you now you're in the room with a guy who spent five years in that room, and you're in the actual room, and that is being there beyond any way you could, you couldn't do that in any other medium. When you're in that cell and you realize how small it is, and then you're in that cell with this big, big man, he's a big man, you're like, holy shit, how did this guy live in here for five years? I mean, you get it. You get how fucked up that is, yeah. But my heart keeps going back to these stories where I want to make a better place. And I know that that happens to be my personal whatever, I seem to be stuck there, but I feel like VR brought me some ability to tell stories that I couldn't do with print, and I couldn't do with documentary, and I couldn't do in any other medium. Journalism and telling our real world stories, as I was saying earlier, I think is super important to democracy. I really believe that's true, that you can't make decisions, you can't vote unless you have informed information, and we've seen with fake news that that's really a problem. Does the ability to control where people look or place them in situations that are completely digitally reconstructed mean that we can manipulate them more uh, easily, more readily? Um, I think this is a very, very important question and why it's exciting that some place like the New York Times that has a reputation of really trying to address what's ethical um, to the best of their abilities um, and have a long history, you know, of trying to uh, um, find some veracity, um, not perfect, they're not perfect, but the fact that they're trying to get into VR indicates that they too believe that this can be a um, uh, uh, transparent place to tell the news. I know that's a really weird word, but if you say objective, we all have um, our ideas of what we bring to, to a journalism piece, but if we're able to allow our audiences to see where we got our information, that's the crucial thing that um, journalism should be doing, should be transparent. So once you've got that VR experience, we have to be able to provide ways for our audience to understand where that information came from.